It is with great honor that I join you today at the Nyeri County Prayer Breakfast, a tradition that had endured for a decade. Thanks to the dedication and commitment of the Nyeri Ecumenical Council of Bishops and the County Government of Nyeri. I bring you warm greetings from His Excellency, President Dr. William Ruto, who acknowledges and commends the steadfastness of this gathering over the years, setting an example worth emulating through our great nation. His Excellency passes his regards. As we gather in this beautiful county that hosts part of the majestic Mount Kenya and the beautiful Abadea Ranges, we are reminded of the splendor of God's creation. The beauty of unity seen in this fellowship is best described in Psalms 133 verses one and I quote, how good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard and down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hammon were falling on Mount Zion, end of quote. Excellencies, clergy, ladies and gentlemen, this 10th anniversary of the Nyeri County Prayer Breakfast is significant because 10 is the number of completeness, divine order and perfection of God's will. We thank God for how far he has brought you and know that he will take you even further for many more decades to come, should our Lord tarry. Today, we come together from different sectors, leaders from government, church, business, and the community, all with a shared purpose of seeking God's guidance and blessings for Nyeri County and our nation. This next season in God for the County, will see the kingdom of God established amongst his people as described in your theme verse, Hosea chapter two, verses 23, and I quote, I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called not my loved one. I will say to those called not my people, you are people, and they will say, you are my God. Indeed, it is your season of enhanced settlement and divine establishment. Our gathering for prayer this morning reminds us of the importance of the three fundamental institutions established by God. These are family, government, and the church. These institutions, when working in harmony, have the power to transform communities and uplift the lives of the people. The family and the church are strongly interconnected, as shown in the book of Genesis, where God used to visit the family of Adam and Eve for fellowship. The family was to produce dominion for God in all spheres of life. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, and I quote, and God said, let us make man in our image after our, like our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that crept upon the earth. The family, as the fundamental unit of society, plays a vital role in shaping the future of our nation. We must work tirelessly to strengthen families, protect our youth and children, and instill them the respect and love for God and man, as well as values of integrity, hard work, and compassion. With responsible youth and strong families, nations thrive socially and economically. I commend the efforts of Her Excellency, my sister, Pastor Dorcas Rigadi, who has been at the forefront of addressing the challenges facing our young men in combating alcoholism and drug abuse. Your dedication and commitment inspires us to fight for the youth of our nation. We cannot overlook the significant role of the church in nation building. The church has been and is a beacon of hope in providing spiritual guidance and leadership as well as a force for good in our society by running schools, hospitals, and various community programs. Our gathering for prayer this morning reminds us of the importance of the three fundamental institutions established by God. These are family, government, and the church. 
These institutions, when working in harmony, have the power to transform communities and uplift the lives of the people. The family and the church are strongly interconnected, as shown in the book of Genesis, where God used to visit the family of Adam and Eve for fellowship. The family was to produce dominion for God in all spheres of life. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, and I quote, and God said, let us make man in our image after our, like, our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that crept upon the earth. The family, as the fundamental unit of society, plays a vital role in shaping the future of our nation. We must work tirelessly to strengthen families, protect our youth and children, and instill them the respect and love for God and man, as well as values of integrity, hard work, and compassion. With responsible youth and strong families, nations thrive socially and economically. I commend the efforts of Her Excellency, my sister, Pastor Dorcas Rigadi, who has been at the forefront of addressing the challenges facing our young men in combating alcoholism and drug abuse. Your dedication and commitment inspires us to fight for the youth of our nation. We cannot overlook the significant role of the church in nation building. The church has been and is a beacon of hope in providing spiritual guidance and leadership as well as a force for good in our society by running schools, hospitals, and various community programs. The church and the government working together have what it takes to bring about transformation to the people. This breakfast confirms and acknowledges that without God, we cannot achieve much, and therefore prioritizes the need to deepen our relationship with God as individuals and recognize the supremacy of God as institutions that have been given the mandate over God's people. Beyond this county prayer breakfast, let us embrace prayer in our families, offices, and gatherings. Above all, let us trust God and seek him in the seven mountains of kingdom influence, namely, family, religion, education, media, arts and entertainment, business and government. These seven spheres of influence were revealed by God separately to Dr. Bill Bright, the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ, and Lorraine Collingham, the founder of Youth, Youth with a Mission. God then asked the two again separately to meet and give a message to the other. Each had the same message to share, isn't our God great? God is concerned about every sphere of our lives. Let us continue to pray fervently for the county and country, our nation and all leaders in every sphere. Let us work together tirelessly with faith and determination to build a brighter future for generations to come. With God's guidance, we have the power to guide every aspect of this county and country for the prosperity of the people and to the honor and glory of God. I encourage the church to pray for all arms of the county and national government and to also find ways to make our nation better. You can support various development programs by ensuring that congregations understand what the government is doing and the opportunities that they can take advantage of. Allow me to highlight a few areas in which I feel the church can work together with the government in support of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda better for the good of our nation and its people. Women are the biggest drivers of the small and medium enterprise sector, and access to funds is critical to enabling women to start and grow businesses. Women's economic empowerment is a topic close to my heart and I aspire to see every woman given the skills, information, and opportunity to transform themselves, their families, and their communities through income-generating activities. The president increased the Women Enterprise Fund by three times to Kenya shillings, 13.5 billion. Further, the application process was simplified digitally through star 254 hash and M-Pesa. 
The Hustler Fund is also another fund that they can tap into. Let us encourage the women in our churches and communities to come together, form groups, and identify income-generating projects that can be funded through these available funds by the government. The government is currently digitizing services and payments to simplify the process of accessing services. The churches and organizations present here can dedicate a room that can be used to train the community on how to access these services. The affordable housing program has an annual target of 200,000 houses to resolve the housing crisis and create approximately 1 million jobs. The president launched the Nyeri Blue Valley Affordable Housing Project on February 16 this year. Let us encourage our members to participate by registering on www.bomayangu.go.ke and start saving towards their own home ownership. Closely connected to affordable housing is technical and vocational training aimed at giving our young people skills and competences for nation building. Let us look out for enrollment opportunities at the various TVETs we have in the country. The government has made it possible for every young person, irrespective of their KCSE grade, to get trained. And I think our Member of Parliament for Nyeri Town has told us this just now when he spoke about an open day on Friday about TVETs and how young people can go to get these opportunities. Lastly, let us support the President's landscape and ecosystem restoration strategy, which aims to plant and grow 15 billion trees by 2032. I have personally committed to plant and grow 500 million trees. This vision by the President presents an opportunity to economically grow certified uh, seedlings that will be supplied to communities.